In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Let's begin our celebration on this 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time by first pausing for a while, call to mind all our sins and failures, and ask God for forgiveness and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of art. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. So our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. God is willing to spare sinful cities for the sake of only a handful of good people. Here, we also find the intercessory prayer of the just man, Abraham. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord though I am bust, but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, 
for the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Baptism makes us sharers in the death and resurrection of Christ. Our Lord has made us new, and Paul challenges us to a new life in Christ. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the circumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the band against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. You have received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The Lord has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. 
plano ko sana sa sa isip ko ang unang-unang pambungad ko sa aking sharing is tanungin kayo kung nagdadasal ba kayo but come to think of it um, when I started thinking about it parang hindi yun logical kasi the fact that you are here in church means that you pray because coming to church, attending the Mass, or coming to Mass, participating in the Mass is a form of prayer. So all of us pray. Given na yun, lahat tayo, we pray. The next question then would be, how do you pray? How do you pray? Yun kasi yung, yung hiningi na lesson ng mga apostles kay Jesus dito sa Gospel. So how do you pray? Iba-iba siguro tayo. May iba, kung mag-pray, kailangan pum- pum- pumikit. Pumikit tsaka naka, 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 takip-kip yung kamay. Hmm? Bakit? Para makafocus. Pumikit para hindi makakita ng distractions. Para just lang ang kausap. In the darkness of our, of our sight, just lang ang ating makakausap. Just lang ang ating bibigyan ng pansin. Tama naman yun. Ikaw ay gaganito yung kamay as a sign of uh, humility, no? na Lord, pakinggan mo yung sinasabi ko, makikinig din ako sa iyo, mga ganyan. So, merong humility. Those are good qualities of prayer. No? Kinakailangan focus, kinakailangan merong humility. Yung ibang tao, nag- nagdidepende sa bumabasa, no? nagbabasa ng prayer book, o kaya sa amin, pag uh, evening prayer at morning prayer, nag- meron kaming liturgy of the hours, binabasa. Maganda din yun kasi hindi ka na kailangan mag- mag-isip na kung anong sasabihin mo, kung paano mo sasabihin. Nakasulat na, katulad ng misa, di ba? Hindi ko na iniisip kung anong sasabihin ko kasi nakasulat na dun sa mga liturgical books. Nasa libro na. All I need to do is read and read with my, with my with devotion and with my, all my heart. No? So the book, the letters in the book, the words in the book, speak for me. Pray on my behalf. And I just put my heart into that prayer. So that's good kasi, you know, your prayer sounds nice, your prayer sounds uh, poetic maybe, so it's great. But the problem is when we do not concentrate anymore on the prayer, di ba? At madalas ganun yung nangyayari. Halimbawa, pag nagro-rosario tayo, di ba, when we pray the rosary, sometimes talagang dire-direcho na lang, ano? parang express, dire-direcho. Hindi na nag-iisip. And that's the downfall of something that is formulated. Na hindi na natin inilalagay yung isip natin dun sa prayer. Hindi na natin inilalagay yung puso natin sa prayer. It sounds nice, it sounds great, but it's not real. They're just words. Kasi hindi ulang puso. Ulang puso. And siguro yun ang, ang pinapakita sa atin o sinasabi sa atin na isang importante na quality ng prayer. Aside from the fact that it becomes focused and humble, it should also be from the heart. It should come from the heart. Kahit, kahit formulated prayer yan, kung iniisip natin, sinasa puso natin, it should come from the heart. Not only should it come from the heart, it should also flow into our lives. Dapat isinasa buhay din natin yung dasal. Otherwise, hanggang dalda lang yun. Hanggang salita lang, Lord, ganito, ganyan, magpapakabait ako, magpapakabuti ako, alagaan mo naman kami, pero hindi ko naman inaalagaan yung iba. Hindi, hindi translate into actual life situations. So our prayer needs to be focused, humble, uh, from the heart, and should flow into our lives. Kaya nga dito sa first reading na binasa natin kay Abraham, di ba? Nag, uh, na, nagpaplano na ang Diyos na sirain niyang, ang Sodom dahil maraming masasamang tao doon. Sabi ni Abraham, Lord, nakiusap si Abraham. Which is, in the first place, prayer, di ba? Prayer, sabi yan sa atin palagi pag pinapadescribe tayo. What is prayer? Prayer is, the simplest way to do it, to define it, is prayer is talking to God, di ba? Prayer is talking to God. So Abraham was talking to God. Nakikibargain. Nagtatawaran. Lord, if I see 50 people, will you destroy Sodom? 
Sana hindi na. And the Lord says, Okay, if you find 50, I will not destroy Sodom. Bumalik si Abraham, sabi, 45 na lang po. Parang wala makikita ang 50. Baka may, may, baka may 45. Okay, sige, pag may 45, I will not destroy Sodom. Mabumalik na naman. 40 na lang po. Nakita niyo yung tawaran baliktad, di ba? Tayo usually, pag tatawad tayo sa palengke, halimbawa, presyo 100, ang itatawad mo kung ano yung handa kang ibayad. Halimbawa, 50. Sabi, o, di, 50 na lang. Pababa yung, yung nagtitinda, sabi niya, okay, 90. Ha, ah, mataas pa. O, sige, 60 na lang. So, hanggang mag-meet kayo kung saan kayo mag-agree, right? E, dito sa, sa kay Abraham, pabaliktad, nag-upisa siya sa mataas, tapos binababa pa ng binababa. Nakikibargain. Nakikibargain si Abraham. But what was important there is that while Abraham was talking to God, bargaining, kahit na parang lumalabas, parang niluloko niya ang Diyos, eh, no? 50 muna, umagri ang Diyos. Mamaya, 45 na lang. Mamaya, hindi umagri naman ang Diyos. 40 na lang, o 30, 20, and so on and so forth. Pero ang importante, God was listening. Abraham prayed from the heart and God listened. Napaka-importante yung tanda natin yun. Kapag magdadasal tayo, if from the heart, God will listen. And God will answer our prayers. Maybe not in the way that we want, but in the way that God in all His wisdom wants. But God answers our prayers. God listens and answers our prayers. Which brings us to the gospel. Sa gospel, pinakita sa atin tatlong klase na, o tatlong uh, paraan para mag-explain ng prayer. Nung una, pinakita talaga ni Jesus yung paano magdasal, kung ano yung idadasal sa Our Father. ba? Diba? Araw-araw, dinadasal siguro natin yan, Our Father. Pero napag-isipan naman natin kung anong mga laman ng Our Father, kung anong mga sinasabi. Have we even thought or inspected or studied what the Our Father is trying to pray. It's trying to tell us in the very beginning, Your kingdom come, Your will be done. So dapat lagi ito yung dadasal tayo ng Our Father, we are ready to accept the will of God. Your will be done. Sa iyo, di ba? Tapos, sinabi pa, forgive us, pero as we forgive others, hindi pwede forgive lang tayo ng forgive sa atin. Pwede dapat din, we also forgive other people. We forgive other people. Dalawa na yun. Pangatlo, sabi pa, lead us not into temptation. Sabi pa, give us our daily bread. Kung umaasa tayo sa Diyos, give us our daily bread. So, isa sa buhay natin yan, hindi lang tayo hingi ng hingi ng daily bread from God. We should also provide Daily bread to others, di ba? Isa na sa buhay natin, yung dasal. Yung isa pa na, yung isa natin, sinabi na importante yung quality ng prayer, isa na sa buhay natin yung prayer. Huwingi tayo sa Diyos ng, ng sustenance, ng makakain sa araw-araw, pero hindi, hindi man lang tayo makapag-share ng kahit yung sobra natin, hindi natin ma-share sa iba. Parang, parang hindi yan totoo hindi totoo yung prayer. So, importante yung mga tinuro sa atin ni Jesus ah, kung ano yung mga idena, idadasal natin. Pero nagbigay pa siya ng isang pang example, yung magkaibigan na sa ating gabi nang hihingi, katok ng katok, nangungulit. Yung isang kaibigan, kaibigan A, nangungulit, give me some bread for my guest who has arrived. Give me some bread. E gabing gabi na, sabi nung kaibigan, kung hindi nang dahil sa pagkakaibigan, kung hindi, ay, pwede kong hindihan ito kahit kaibigan ko siya. Pero hindi ko pwede hindihan dahil otherwise, kukulitin ako ng kukulitin. Ibig sabihin, prayer needs to be persistent, persevering. So okay lang, mangulit tayo na mangulit sa Diyos kasi kaibigan naman natin ng Diyos eh. Pagkaibigan mo, di ba, pakapala na? Wala nang hiya-hiya. So when we ask God for something, Because God is our friend, God is our Father. When we ask God for something, we can persevere, we can persist. You know, we can kulit God in asking for what we, what we are, to ask for what we need. As long as what we ask for is good. Di ba? 
Hindi mo tayo hihingi ng hindi maganda. At kung hindi maganda yung hihingi natin, malamang hindi ibibigay. So be persistent. Continue asking God. And when God answers, um, you'll be surprised. Sometimes God, God will answer us in the way that He wants, not in the way that we want. But the most important thing, I think, in all of this, nakita na natin how we should be focused and humble, should be, um, we should live out our prayer, um, ipang, ipakita natin sa buhay, it should come from the heart, should be sincere. But the most, siguro, the most important thing that we need to think about is that prayer, as, as we pray, it will be even nicer, better, the best, if we could be the answer to the prayers of other people. Kasi malamang, yung prayers natin nasasagot through other people. Dumadating yung mga hinihingi natin sa pamamagitan ng ibang mga tao. Other people become the answers to our prayers. But wouldn't it be nice that if we to ourselves try to be the answers to other people's prayer? And how can that happen? That can happen only if we are open, if we are sensitive, if we listen enough to the needs of other people. No? Maging nakatuon yung ating tenga sa mga pangailangan, sa mga uh, kagustuhan ng ibang mga tao. Then we can be the answer to the prayers of other people. We ask God today. We ask God that our prayers would always be humble and heartfelt that we can live out our prayers and can do that, hopefully, by being the answer to the prayers of other people. Let us all stand now. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord Jesus asks us to pray with confidence to you, Father. In a special way, we pray for our needs, the needs of our church, of our community. Now let, let our response be, Gracious Lord, hear us. Gracious Lord, hear us. Guide Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may radiate in their life and in service the Father's love and care for His children. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. Lead our government leaders, that they may not see themselves as masters lording over the people, but as guardians entrusted with the welfare of all especially the poor and the vulnerable, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. Give strength to those who are discouraged by the pains of their trials and sickness. May they learn to grow through their suffering, for you are with them, loving Father, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. Attend to the needs of our grandparents and the elderly. Let them experience your abiding presence and care through their families and those who love them, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. Embrace our departed brethren into your loving and forgiving arms as they enter your eternal communion, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. 
Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and their personal intentions. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear us. Father, hear the prayers of your children. Help us grow in love for one another and become perfect witnesses of your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please all stand. Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly, 
and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please all stand. Let us pray now to our Father in heaven in the words that our Lord himself has taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace on you. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Peace all stand. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, we would like to inform you that starting August 2022, during Saturdays and Sundays only, Masses shall begin at 5 o'clock in the morning. On August 6, first Saturday of the month, Dawn Rosary shall begin at 4.30 in the morning. Thank you very much for your continued support. Please all stand. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakikisa sa Santa Misa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bestow increase of heavenly grace on your faithful, O Lord. May they praise you with their lips, with their souls, with their lives. And since it is by your gift that we exist, may our whole lives be yours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall now pray for the sick and bless your religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary. May all these articles be blessed and those who use them made holy as they fulfill the will of God according to the example of the Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.